popping up on many public domain discs is a little movie called Memorial Valley Massacre. Think Friday the 13th crossed with Don't Go in the Woods. All you gotta do is just envision the movie's caveman killer to be an allegory for nature fighting back against those trying to destroy it. Of course, given that the film is from the director of something called Zadar, Cow from Hell, it fails in that message. But how else does Memorial Valley Massacre fail? Well, let's shut the fuck up for a bit and give this movie a watch. A lot of movies have alternate titles, uh, this one's is Son of Sleepaway Camp. Supposedly it's some kind of international title. But this one doesn't even stop at just an alternate title. Listen, it uses the exact same soundtrack from Sleepaway Camp. You can even hear the campers from Sleepaway Camp begin to speak. This is where the line between alternate version and fan edit begins to blur. Memorial Valley is basically the slasher movie version of Jellystone Park. A group of campers are waiting to get into the place, but they're being held up by... Cameron Mitchell? Really? Cameron Mitchell is wanting to build superstores across the valley, but with a construction worker turning up dead and a dog being found in a well, the workers decide to go home. But they let the citizens camp there anyway. That's perfectly fine. Maybe that's why his character disappears and he's replaced with his son. Who is he? He's my son. Well, you said that if I ever wanted a job on one of your projects, I could have it. Okay, I'm not sure if switching the Sleepaway Camp music out and replacing it with Bubsy music was a good call. Oh good, now it's back to being a horror film. Unlike Sleepaway Camp, we get a good reveal of our killer five minutes into the movie. Who did Angela impregnate? The two rangers aren't exactly getting along, but at least one of them has a chance at getting laid. What's your name? Call me David. Unfortunately, they have a group of bikers on their hands. Never mind the bikers, there's something else going wrong. The snakes! For Christ's sake, dozens of them! All over our food! What if my kids were here? You know, that kind of begs the question, where are your kids? Are there any more unlikable characters this movie's gonna throw at us? Excuse me, are you aware that there's no off-road traveling allowed in this area? Oh, bug off, asshole. While this movie has nothing to do with any of the Sleepaway Camp films, would you believe that this character is actually the perfect foreshadowing for the lead in Return of Sleepaway Camp? So, Fanny Arbuckle starts riding around like a moron, and I think I know where this scene is going. No, no, this character finishes off quite lame. <laughs> Wow, graphic. The killer is bleeding more than the victim. We can't forget that this is a slasher film. It's cold! Also, no joke here, it actually does get more awkward because this version inserts clips of hardcore pornography. I won't be surprised if we get some facial inserts with these three, only with an intruder. <laughs> You know, George, as long as that bear is still out there, you got a problem. Mm. Everyone appears to be under the impression that the killer is a bear. I'm leading a hunting party this morning to get the bear, so I would like volunteers to show up at the camp store. Or you could all just go home. Hopefully someone here knows how to shoot. Ah! <laughs> Wandering Tommy Wiseau looks so threatened. He better hurry, because Hell's Bloody Devils here have found his home. And just when you think that some kind of music should kick in, it doesn't. The music is certainly conveying my emotions. <laughs> Nothing. 
Ah, all he wanted was the Confederate General's skull from Night of Horror back. But too late, he's still gonna kill you. <laughs> At least the bear is finally off the hook. It's been a man all along. You could have stopped it. It might be my son. Angela impregnated you? This is the most confusing non-entry in the series. I don't know how these people are going to find the killer. He has a natural habit of hiding in plain sight. As in, there he fucking is. Yeah, yeah, death scene. But more importantly, the fuck was he doing there? You smell gas? Well, it's got a bigger budget than any of the other sleepaway camps, I guess. Oh my. I feel good. Charming. <laughs> and that's what should have happened in Breaking Dawn Part 1. I'm more concerned with how Captain Caveman learned how to drive a fucking bulldozer. He destroyed his father's shack, though, so now it's personal. Maybe Father can convince him that he is the son of Sleepaway Camp. Are you Stephen Webster? Knew it. He's Lee Van Cleef! And this is how the fucking movie ends. You can try, but you'll never find him. Yeah, sure, you'll never find him. Unless you sneak up on him, or if he's standing on top of a fucking hill in broad daylight. Well, that was a colossal waste of time. That movie had nothing to do with Sleepaway Camp or proper filmmaking. 